It's a high-tech conversation. On the low-tech topic. Live on the World Wide Web via Zoom. Bench Talk 101. I mean, this is something really different tonight. Um, and uh, it spawned off of a, a conversation a, a couple of weeks ago um, a, a after hours where um, people were discussing, you know, cr craftsmen on canvas. And uh, uh, a few of you thought it would be a great idea to, to share it with everybody and, and give everybody some pre-warning so that we could bring our own and, and share them in. So um, I think this is, uh, this is great. And this is uh, kind of showing the diversity of the group um, uh, of what we've got here. So, uh, you know, well, well done, for that, guys. Um, what um, I think we're going to start with um, one from Jim um, and Srinik, are you going to share the screen for this one? Yes, I am. Um, so a few, the painting that was in the invite, which was the painting that we talked about a few weeks ago, um, happens, happens to be linked to Jim uh, in the sense that Jim made the saw that you can see in, in the painting here, um, just on, on the right hand side on the bench. So um, just to show you, just to quickly show you the, the saw that Jim made, um, here's the saw that Jim was showing us. And um, so that's, that's what sparked this, this whole talk. And I will now show you the photographs that Jim sent me today. That looks Give nice to have to go on a calendar, that last photo. Yeah, so a, cu a couple of, uh, I don't know, maybe even more of a year ago, or possibly more than that, um, there became a subject of, I, I, I guess you guys know that I'm, I've, I've suddenly disappeared down this rabbit hole of, uh, of making dividers, sets of dividers. And uh, we're up to number, divider set number three. Well, yeah, three, well, nearly finished set number two. But number three, uh, I had planned uh, using the first two to practice with, that's all the joints um, and the hinge um, in order to make uh, a set of these, which are some people would be totally familiar with this and why it's sitting on, on this uh, Michelangelo painting of Adam. Uh, but these are a set of golden ratio dividers uh, and the golden ratio or phi, it goes back well before I think even the Egyptians. Um, it is a Everybody say again. Yeah, it is a um, um, a ratio that was known to the Egyptians. In fact, uh, it's one point six one eight uh, and a few more decimal places, but one point six one eight, which people see on my T-shirt that I wear quite often, is one of my favourite numbers. And it is it is based on um, the theory that there is a ratio of perfection or golden perfection of visual things, things in nature, things like spiral galaxies, things like um, Nautilus in the sea or the curve of a snail's shell. Uh, in this particular depiction, it's it's indicating or or suggesting and that Michelangelo even used it in paintings, whereby uh, the right hand side of God um, is 1.618 times the amount uh, that Adam is outstretched. And, and by doing this, you get a visual harmony, a harmony that is um, seen often in things like Georgian architecture, where the ground floor is 1.618, and then the next one above is one, and then the next one above that is so on ratio of the one below it. Um, and, and the Georgians will. You see it in, in um, uh, chests of drawers uh, where the drawer height uh, changes as it goes up. And there is this uh, thing that the brain sees as the harmonious um, aspect of that particular uh, ratio, which is called the golden ratio. Um, so uh, I, I decided that this might be a very good idea to uh, create a set of these in my divide a series and um, then uh, put these up as one of the three prizes in this year's Richard Arnold prize uh, draw for the Macmillan charity. So uh, Shani, if you go off back to live again. Oh, you're gonna go pictures. I, I, oh, I okay, do yeah, go, do oh, go yeah. pictures. Okay, so I started sawing bits of, uh, have you got the ones I sent with the original brass plate? uh the first ones hang on 
No, but I can get them up. Give me two seconds. The ones that you sent me yesterday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just the plate with the. So there are designs. Uh, there are many designs. One of my most favourite uh, is a, a guy called Søren Bergen, uh, presumably some Scandinavian guy who lives in New Zealand. Uh, he's a sculptor, um, and you can Google that online. Uh, but they're very modernistic. So I just went back and looked at those ones from Michelangelo's picture there, and I thought to myself, well, I'll, I I quite like the look of the, those. And so um, I've decided to start making them this week. And on Instagram, there's a set of uh, pictures which um, uh, Shonik is getting the original ones for in a second. Um, so I thought that design would be would be nice. Um, there's actually earlier ones than that, um, the ones of the actual brass plate, but doesn't matter. Have you got the ones I sent you like at the beginning? Uh, that's that's what you sent me. Okay. Okay. Fine. On Instagram, there's a set of the, the progress set anyway. So um, it, uh, if you want want to go to the the next one, so the the picture that's on the screen now is basically um, just sawn out, chopped out with a saw, uh, just a rough. Uh, uh, there you go. Right, perfect. Yeah, that's the one I'm talking about. Right. So if you if you, um, I just grabs a piece of uh, a brass plate. Uh, it's uh, I can't remember four mil i think um and if you go to the next one showing it there there's a close-up of that and um i just uh, followed the you can make the shape anything you want really in between the are uh, the only critical points are the knuckle joints and the tips from the knuckle to the points uh so in between you can have any curves you want and the chinese ones and the ones shown in the michelangelo they're traditional uh quite old design quite original design from quite an early period uh so i thought you know that actually is my favorite one so i just scribbled out uh the rough shapes there and then um i cut them cut them out which is the ones you saw before that do you want to move on for a bit maybe go to the maybe go to the the yeah you go so as I say, this these dividers are just roughly cut out. That's just the shape. They will be embellished in between um, the curves. And I, I don't know yet whether it will be engraving or lamb's tongues or bevels or all sorts of things in the in the actual knuckle joints themselves. Like uh, I might be going for, for phosphor, phosphor bronze um, sleeve bearings in there. Um, and uh, so, but it's it, it's at this stage that I wanted to get the datum points correct. So that's the points and the center uh, holes, um, so that the uh, right hand side between the inner arm and the left arm is one, and the one on the right hand side and the inner arm is one point one eight, or the golden ratio there. Whenever you open them up at whatever position you open them up, that ratio remains the same. So those. These dividers are very handy for artists and for woodworkers um, because you can open and close them and lock them into place and use them in situ, either just as a guide to your woodworking or your art or um, abs absolutely to mark it out. So if you go on to the bits where I'm actually uh, refining it from there onwards, then show it. Yeah, so now it's just a case of making the the uh, them look a little bit uh, tart, tart them up a bit. So we're now working to the line. Again, like I said, the line could be anywhere. It's just as long as the the points that I've already created now, uh, they will always remain. So on the next one, and here we just see it's I just smoothed them off. These two on the outer sides, the left and the right arm, the main arms, are absolutely exactly the same and. Um, they're no different to any other set of dividers, except they're a bit, you know, fancy. Um, so they were done back to back in parallel, in in a tandem. Um, and here you can see I've just all I've done is basically uh, stuck them together using the pin taper pins that you use for uh, clock and watch making. It's brass taper pins, and they just top tap in, and it keeps the two locked together, just like that. And then, but so that's the outer curve and the inner curves. Is all, all of this was. Like done by hand, so it's all 
just filed to the lines using uh, the bastard file there and then later on uh, going down to smoother and smoother filing uh, and finally using um, uh, abrasive papers to smooth it off and uh, and then we end up with yeah the next one okay you jump one but there you go so one the one above it shredding that that one yep so there's the two main arms that they will be smoothed off and, and and from that point on i now need to just refine the the hubs but again like i said i'm i'm thinking of doing that something special there and uh i've left them a bit rough so i've got some to play with um and uh again the top will be a, a a hinge similar to the ones i've already used and and then once i did those two i just refined the other two arms very simple arms they're just straight arms and on the next one, and that, and you can see from that, um, and the next one, that uh, they're all just joined together, and that's and that's it. So I just wanted to let you know, just as a heads up, because you're kind of the guys here are the first people to know that we're first of all going to have the prize draw. It's going to be sometime we think in June, early June, as normal. Um, there will be three prizes. This when it's finished uh, in a box, and. Um, there will be a plane by Richard, and I think Richard may or may not want to explain that today or later. Um, and also, I've just heard from Bill and Sarah, they're the, gonna be the third donors, and they are donating a skeleton saw from Shane Skelton that is, um, was a prototype Swift. It's the first one of the Swift saws, and it's the one that Bill ordered, um, very first and it's, it's unused so he's donating that to the to the charity as well which is hugely hugely kind of him um but so it'd be well worth following the bench talk updates as we go through thanks uh jeffrey for letting me uh jump ahead and stick these in they had the relevance to the painting so i thought i'd i'd go ahead with with that and then um my my entry for today i might as well just carry on is um if if you're a, a fan of um of the medieval um artist Albrecht Dürer um, from 1514 is Melancholia, which we mentioned last week, those of you who weren't here, um, was one that I absolutely, well, it really actually got me interested in old tools, really. And I think I made a blow up of, of the next part there, Shrenik, did I? Uh, I don't think you did, but I can zoom in. That's the... Yeah, yeah, down the bottom right, uh, left-hand corner. Bottom left. Uh, actually, it's all over the place, but um, you've got a set of dividers right in his hands there. Um, these are beautiful. Now, these are going to be next one that I'm going to be doing, which are Michelangelo dividers from about the same period. Um, and if you notice the top of the dividers there, they're, um, they're a knuckle joint. So this is a, a very um, complex and uh, beautiful joint, um, which forms a knuckle, uh, rather like the knuckle of your of your hand, and they rotate around uh, like a ball, and it's a ball and knuckle joint. Uh, very quite complex, very delicate in in the ones that are in the uh, Museo Galileo. So that's that's the next set of dividers, somewhere down the line, uh, in the bottom left hand corner. There are. Um, There's um, uh, quite a beautiful uh, Germanic plane from the uh, medieval period, the 16th century, uh, which is very similar to some of the designs you see even up till today with the horn at the front uh, to push and, uh, and just uh, recesses on the back. Uh, so it's uh, uh, fascinating. It's interesting to see also, you can see the uh, detail of the eyes in the mouth, in, in the, uh, laid in the uh, iron cavity there and also the fact that it's uh looks to be some form of uh uh sort of wedge that looks like a shape of a roof uh it's looks like it's designed into fit into winged wedges rather than uh uh just flat so and very very thick iron there which is interesting and to the right of that you can see a, a saw that is a typical shape of um, the medieval period. In fact, I was at Crissing Temple in uh, 2016, 17, and I 
bumped into this guy who was selling knives from that period. Um, he actually makes them today. Um, and I've got one exactly that shape, but of course that's a saw. How much artistic license there is there, I, I don't know, um, but it looks to be pretty aggressive. Uh, and over, the, over on the, to the right, you see even uh, clout nails by the looks of it, uh, forged nails. And the more you look, and I think this is where we, we discussed all of this last week, Jeffrey, is that people see more and more things in paintings. Um, and I don't know how you want to uh, open this up to, to general conversation. I want to just move on to the next one. I think, I think, I think this is good. Um, I, if we zoom out a bit, because it's, it's quite pixelated, isn't it? Um, and, and I think um, maybe my internet's quite slow. Um, if, you, if you zoom right out, um, Shrenik, so we see the picture. I mean, there's so many fascinating parts of this picture. Um, by the way, everybody, I, I, I muted you all because there was different background noises. If you, if you haven't got background noises, please um, unmute yourselves and, and, and contribute and join in. Um, but if, if you if you keep keep aware of that, but I mean the, the more like like, like um, Jim says, the more you look into this, um, the more you've got into it. You know, you've got some sort of uh, you know snips there uh, down the bottom. You've got um, you know there's a there's a, 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 a grinding wheel there by the looks of it that the cherub is is sat on. Is is that what you make of it, uh, Jim? I I think it's it I th I thought it was a millstone, but the more I think about it. The fact it's about I think it's a sharp, and, it's a sharp and, yeah, yeah I agree there's something else on the angel's lap behind the dividers sort marking of the right bubble. of a right hand yeah I think there's a marking gauge behind there like it. with two stems as well isn't it it's frustrating you wanted to wanted to bring it out and show it to you mm. Um, yeah, I don't know if we can get a high res image from the gallery. Um, I give me a give me a minute and I'll find one. I think actually. Oh, I can see. Just... Yeah, right next to the dividers. Yeah. Near, his, near his hand, there's a. It's, oh. it does look like. Yeah, it does look like a dual marking gauge, doesn't it? No, almost a um, mortise gauge. Yeah. Looks like there's two, two bars where the center. Yeah. Then the uh, the above the the uh, blade of the plane, those are nail pullers. Oh, they're pincers. We call and, them yeah, pincers. They're, they're designed yeah. for pulling out the nail. Well, some I are, got, some are, pairs. and others, some are if they come together enough. Others are just used for blacksmiths to hold work. Right. There are many. There are many designs like that. But the yeah, but it's quite interesting that. It's quite interesting that the, the, the nails appear the nails to have there. potentially been pulled out. But I'm, I'm wondering what is the, the very left hand bottom corner? Uh, it looks like, I, it looks you know, like it looks like, an, it it looks like an early, early Lee Nielsen uh, um, gauge that you set your uh, blade in to do it on your honing guide. <laughs> I, think, I think it probably is, yeah. It, I, I, that, that is a square. Square. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Chris it's a classic lost cross from about a year ago. He made a couple. Still ah. used this way. Oh, oh, there you go. Like... That's much better. That Sorry, where be, are we? Uh... Where are we looking? Lower oh, left, yeah. under the sphere. I think our marking gauge might be a, about a classic lot, Germanic lot form. Yeah, book. There. Yeah. yeah. So this is square. a. Okay, so below that. The map. Yeah. That is a square. That's a square. That's a square. That's a square. Yes, yeah. it is. Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, actually, hang on though, because the inner races of the each 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 slot uh, are curved. So as you go from the back, it curves, it curves, it curves. Yeah, is that that's, is that... that's for marking out. Uh, you know, we have those end pieces. It they. They come way bigger also for for you know timber framers, but but the small ones just for for drawing curves. They still do it this way. And you make you have you you've got designs because that is beautiful. Is that the way that uh -huh. uh, is done on the uh, on the molding on the end of the handle to just make yeah, yeah. like a hand grip? Hmm. Uh, that's uh, 
it, it, it came until in, in my catalogs up to the 1950s uh, when when carpenters uh, apprentices bought their box of tools uh, this was a classic component same same with the marking gauge uh, marking gauge it's, it's a classic germanic form with the two stems rather far apart and with the locking me mechanism in the middle i i have a few of them they now still look got, the same but now we've got high res we can see that wedge a bit much clearer yeah, that's a book yeah, yeah. That's that's a book. Book, with a, book with a clasp isn't it yeah. ah, okay it's, it looked like the marking gauge yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. sorry yeah. folks yeah. <laughs> But we have those two two stem marking gauges with the right. thin stems quite far apart still in, in Germanic right. tradition. So you could see beautifully the uh, oh look at the design on that. I mean Durer was such an absolute genius with genius. the accuracy genius. of his. Look um, at the curves on that on that scroll on, on the halfway down the arm. I mean, it's just utter. And you could even see the hinge detailing and the oh. and the facets on that knuckle joint. Up, utterly astounding. I've got to get uh, this. I was going to suggest gonna some trial, challenge of file work. For yeah, you, Jim, yeah. as you try to recreate that. Yeah, well, I'm going to, but I'm going to do it in miniature form. So the form that he's got oh, there yeah. is. It's, it's interesting too because the top of the left leg has to slide into the top of the right leg. So yeah, the, the whole joint is is all the way down to to the decoration. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. That's how I that's how I made my first two. That that you actually use steel in there. So the the right arm finishes uh, at the point at which that blade. It's it's an optical illusion, and so it yeah. rolls underneath it. And yeah. the left arm has the let's call it a watermelon, mm. and with a slot in it into which the metal slots and, yeah. and sometimes on the ones think, I've done there's three of them. I think notable here is that Albrecht Dürer was an engraver and he, he, I, I would suggest anybody buying books of his collection of work I have several of them but if you notice the person that's holding those um, are is only holding one of the points and, and yeah. not using it as you would naturally use it but he would use it that way if he was using that point as an engraver. Mm -hmm. Oh right! And doing right. scratch lines. Mm. And he's right. buried in his leg. <laughs> <laughs> the other one's just resting on the side. You can't see behind that fabric. So, so would would he would he let's say let's say he had something <laughs> between his legs, right? That was oh, her legs. Assume he did. He had children. Oh yeah, her legs. Sorry. If if she if she had, she's probably a bit upset by now. But uh, if she had. They say something like a piece of wood with a hole in it that you put the divider in and you did the engraving. It says it was an engraver. You did the engraving. You could do arcs like that with absolute perfection, couldn't you? Yeah. Yeah. I wouldn't assume that it's a woman, though. I. I it's got a very masculine face. Are and, you not in a long, a long skirt? Well, oh, but angels angel. dressed in in uh, long robes. <laughs> so, sorry, so, folks. Uh, she she is melancholia. Impersonated, so it is she is a woman. Oh, it is a woman. No, she's Melancholia. Melancholia. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, def it's def definitely not Gabriel, even though he's got a sheet there. Yeah. It's fascinating. And, you, and you're right on the stone. The the that's a sharpening stone because if it were a uh, a grain or grinding stone, there would be would have hash marks on the face. Yeah, and that's a and dog. That would be that's... an important. That would be an important detail based on the other types of details that are in there. And and what but, is the what is the tetra uh, polyhedral thingy for? Do you think that's a surface? Is a part of a building? I think it's what he would have used as as he would have cut it into pieces to use for lithographs, because you did lithographs on stones. So I think that he's he's crossing over into things that he does. He, he's got the artist interpreted in here as well. Right. Yeah, I like the strap hammer. Yeah, that's beautiful, isn't it? I, I'm just wondering what the uh, significance of this numbering is. It's a magic square with the date in the middle. Oh, yeah. right. 1514. Yeah. And um... add up the sides. It's add so up the rows cool. and the columns. They'll come to the same number. Add up any four 16, squares in the corner. Add up to the same number. <laughs> It, they were, it's the early Sudoku. Yeah. 
you 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 sure that that, that it's, there's nothing sort of uh, holy grail underneath there? We're not talking uh, Da Vinci Code here. Because <laughs> no, no, the time's we're talking time's deep. running out. Yeah. Well, yes, he's he's dealing with time there. The bell is interesting as well. The the workings, and then there's a fire in the background uh -huh. behind that stone. Yeah, some coals and a cup sitting on it. It's a melting pot. Yeah, yeah. Some backyard casting going on. Oh what yeah. What is that tool just below the the fire box or the fire? The hammer or is oh, it right in there? It's real no. small. They're yeah. like tongs. 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 They're like tongs, tongs to Do you remove see the face metal right there. The crucible in the stone. Yeah. The face. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Is it? Is that the artist? No, yeah. I think we're on Mars. I mean, we're it's... right there. I know we're can't on miss Mars. It. Jim will attest to it. I thought it was Lou Reed. You see that now, Jim? <laughs> <laughs> area. Of... Yeah, that's Lou Reed. Reed. I definitely see Lou Reed. No, that's, that's Area it. Forty-two. Right. No, it's John Lennon. Definitely John Lennon. Media of life. I think well, we should you're... stay with Dura for the whole evening. Right. Put a yeah. suggestion in the chat that leads to another. Was he making uh, ink, ink in, in the pot there? If he's lithograph? Well, litho is the rocks, isn't it? Yeah. Well, I mean, the stone. ink. What, what's could up be... the dog? Is that a lamp? Where? It's a very famished dog. Yeah, it is oh, really well, amazing. Well, I really thought that was a sheep. Yeah. For the whole of my life, I thought that was a sheep. Oh, I always thought it was a chupacabra. What is Dura's okay. rescue dog, Jim. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's Alfie. That's Alfie's great, great, yeah. great, 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 great. Alfie great. without the shine. Yeah, That's what, what's... What, what's the object underneath the dog on the left? Is it a lamp? It does look like a spirit be... lamp, doesn't it? Yeah. It could be an alcohol burner for yeah for heating things or something. No, it's got there's, something no, in front of it. There's lines coming out the top of it, like a, a plumb bob or something. But yeah, that's a plumb bob. Oh ah, yeah. Yeah. Well, could could it be a um uh, something like the the Japanese use it? They have like a pot of ink with a reel in it, and oh. and, and they oh, yeah. 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 Oh yeah, line. for flicking flicking lines. Yeah. Well, you would have, line with. Uh, you would only have one line, wouldn't you? If it was a string line. Right. Yeah. Well. Mm. That's, you see, that's... That, isn't it? Isn't it fascinating how utterly accurate it is? I mean, you and you can rely upon it being a, a sheep. An photographic depiction, couldn't you? It's not a sheep. Yeah. He looks yeah. like Alfie now. Doesn't look like <laughs> a sheep at all. He still looks like a sheep now, actually. Can you do your Dura impression. He's doing your I think we've um, enjoyed looking yeah. at the painting. Um, should we should we move on to more because otherwise we'll uh, yeah yeah run out of time. Um, Tr well, Trinic, Trinic, you, you could, but actually this this is gonna. I think this is a really interesting topic um, of, of looking at the paintings like this, and actually um, we we could always store some of the these up and, and do them in future weeks. You know, there's, okay. there's no, yeah. You don't need to. I mean, if everybody's in favour of that, we don't need to rush into it right now. I mean, I mean, th there's so much more in this picture. If you look at the the rungs of the ladder. Um, and, and the construction of the ladder. And then you look behind it and you see a bit of marquetry there um, on, the, on the, whether it's a box lid or, or something. And it's, um, it looks like a, um, a, a, a Germanic um, castle scene, um, you know, in, in veneers or something. I, you know, I don't, it's, there's, there's so much more in this picture, isn't there? I'm seeing a there's shoreline. A, there's a ship, there's a ship. <laughs> Behind yeah, the, yeah, I'm seeing a shoreline in a small village and a and a and the uh, horizon line. Yeah, and ship and ships. they are ships yeah. in harbor in harbor as yeah. they go round yeah. uh, behind the rungs of the ladders. But the ladder construction is just gorgeous, isn't it? It's like an apple ladder from Kent. Is that a face in the ladder just above the stone? Yeah, another one of them aliens. Mm. <laughs> Pixie. But you, you could just, uh, there's that BBC program that's synchronized with the internet and it's just so fascinating where they go into, they take like, you, you see this great master and then they take segments of it, quadrants yeah. and, and various panels of it. And, and you just look at it. And the more you look at it, the more you see in it. And it's just, 
a fabulous so a program. A little bit of M.C. Escher with that ladder at the bottom. It looks like it's leaning to the right and until you get to the top and you realize it's leaning towards us. Hmm. And it's only defined by the wall that it's leaning against hmm. that we don't see. Hmm. And it doesn't go around infinitely, does it? No. No. Not yet. We have to go further up. Hourglass. Say again? Is there some words in the top of the hourglass? We can't see it in that image, but I was just trying to, if, if you move it. Well, if we, if we focus just on the hourglass, then we might. The scale is very nice too. I think there are the detail figures. on the scale. Mm. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's the right the clock. Numbers. Yeah, there's, Roman numerals. There, there's a clock at the top as well. Oh, yeah. Is there not? Uh, hang oh, on. It's not oh. oh, okay. It's it's dial. Dial. That's it. Yeah. Uh, oh, hold on, hold it. Can you can you just bring it down and make it central? There you go. Yeah, that's a, that's a vertical sundial. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, not, it's not an hourglass. Ah. Well, it's both. No, oh. it is an hourglass. You can see the yes. You can two things. The sand. You the sand. Yes. You get uh, the hours and the minutes. Can you can you bring it so it's in the screen so that you can see the numerals at the top because it's on my it Android. Yeah, and that's it's perfect. It's Hang on. There you go. Yeah. Uh, that's, yeah, what is that? Okay, so assuming that, that, that there's a, ah, right, there's something in the top glass that goes down with the time and it pulls down on that lever, which pulls the other one across and moves across as time passes. There might be something with the sand inside. Yeah. If that string goes in there and as the sand goes down, it would draw that in, it would pivot that down. Yeah. yeah, but don't forget, this is to turn it back over. You've got to turn the whole thing over. So if there was yeah, something... You've got to wait an hour to reset it for your eggs. But, but yeah. if it's connected in the top, you, you, you wouldn't be able to spin it over. Uh, yeah, but if... what is that? How how or what? I mean, clearly, clearly that... That, that bob does move towards those points, which is four, three, two, one, and then 12, 10, 11, 10, 9, right? So that goes across... Uh, so, so whatever whatever is in below that must be pulled by that lever to give that angular pointer. I think we are overinterpreting here. Yeah, I think that's uh, just a, a, a plain old memento mori. Really? Yeah. The the uh, I, I I think the, the gnomon on the on the sundial looks like a scythe. So a, a symbol of 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 the pa pa passage of time and and of dying eventually. You think so? Yeah, I do as well. I think we should ask Albrecht. Yes. Yeah, dial him up. Let's see if we can get him on there next week. Al knows everything. I think everyone missed Stephen's pun there. No, no, we ignored it. There is uh, more information <laughs> on uh, Dewar's uh, magic square. It is a magic constant of 34 used uh, in this engraving. Um, it looks like it's a disorganized jumble of uh, scientific equipment lying around unused but it says the uh, intellectual site absorbed so they use that magic square to uh, come up with the sum of numbers and yeah, it's, try, it's kind of very disorganized uh, Wikipedia and it's, it's uh, called the Gnome, Gnome uh, magic square pair any uh, pair of numbers symmetrically placed about the center of the square uh, sums to 17, uh, a proper to making the square even more magical, is what it says. Yeah. Does anyone is... know what the melancholia at the back means? Melancholy. Melancholy. Melancholy, being so that's, that's it. Sadness. Yeah. That bit of depression now. I read that as a, as a G, and that's probably why I misunderstood. The angel, uh, the angel melancholia there has got a bunch of keys on her, uh, on her robes. Mm. Yeah. On the chatelaine. Yeah. Yeah. Now, what are the keys for? That's Alfie again. Yeah, Alfie's always in these. Uh, the bat. The bat in the sky, isn't it? Oh, it's a bat. Melancholia on its wings. Uh. Uh, oh wow, that's a bat. I never knew that was a bat. Uh, a woman carrying keys on her belt was usually a sign that she was uh, the lady of the house. Right. She's someone who was responsible for locking up and, and keeping things under lock and key. So it was it, it tends to be a sign of, of responsibility and and 
uh, a position of relative importance in the household, carrying the keys. Yeah, there was even a CAD file um, episode uh, that was the woman of the house, the keys, and there was the reason for the exactly. murder. And, and but yeah. also that that's a flying fox, not a bat. Oh, well, that's what the two uh -huh. are the same. A flying fox and a bat are known as the same here in the United States. Uh, ben, ben Tyerman's asking, what's the symbol after the A letter? Uh, yeah, it's an I, 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 isn't it? It's an and, an ampersand. Yeah, or just a graphic divider because I think it says melancholia one. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Indicating that it might be a melancholia two. If, if, if I'm not completely wrong, uh, I, I think uh, melancholia is part of a four part uh, group of uh, impersonations like melancholia and I can't remember the others. Because well, it, it, I only... it would be the four tempers. You would have me melancholy, yeah. you would have, have uh, joy. Yeah. Yeah. And there is uh, Ang anger. Anger, yes. And I forget the fourth, but. Yeah. And there is, oh, what's melancholy? Joy. Melancholy, joy. Anger. Um, did anyone notice the rainbow in the background? Next one. Really yeah. right. I hadn't thought about it. Yeah, I just noticed it. Happiness. Or, or possibly a, a, a sun halo. Well, that that stylistic uh, representation there with the, the tail on it is typically for a comet in, in medieval depictions. Yeah. Oh, was 1514 a comet? I don't I'll know. Check that. That, that sounds about right. Somebody need to Google Haley, Holly. <laughs> Could so, be one of the other ones. Is too. that is that right in right above the triangular top of the polyhedron? Mm -hmm. um, is that a palm tree in the water? No, that's a Loch Ness monster, I think. Oh, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> yep, that's Nessie. Uh, actually, I actually, know. I reckon this one, this part from the right hand side of that across has been done by Bob Ross, and that's the accident. It's a happy little accident. Happy little accident in the middle. He's put a tree in the middle of the sea. Oh, this one? No, 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 way back over in the sea. That's a cube. Yeah, that's there. Just there. Oh, yeah, there. I see that, yeah, in the middle here. It looks like yeah, the, the small angel is writing on a tablet. The, 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 you mean the... Um, the cherub, or...? Cherub, that's the word I was looking for. Yes, it on. does actually. You can see the pen. Um, hang on, let me try and annotate it. It looks like it might. It looks like it might be a wax tablet and the stylus. So you Judging. can see the stylus here, and you can see the wax tablet there. Or it could be a, a graphite. Because yeah. sometimes, sometimes there are silver pen as well. Yeah. Silver point. Yeah. But 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 <laughs> it's interesting. It's probably not a tablet. It's probably an apple because that he's got. Yeah, you know, pretty fancy clothes. So I would yeah. think it's an Apple device. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. Down the oh, it's melancholia. Leave it, leave it to the young. Leave it, it to the young to learn how again, to how to That's going to be melancholia too when she grows up. Mm. <laughs> so, uh, Shrenik, zoom right out so we can see the whole thing. Yeah, what, looks like Winston Churchill. Yeah, what, what do you get if you cross a melon with a collie? Oh, a uh, melancholy uh, baby. <laughs> it looks like there's a, it like might be a winding stick or uh, under the saw. It, it does, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah or uh, a straight edge. Straight edge. Yeah. There's one more thing we've not identified down at the bottom right hand corner. Indeed. Yes. Yes. It yes. looks like a syringe, doesn't it? It does yeah. the To the Did right of the nails there. With the yes, just had the vaccination. By yeah. the nails. Yeah, it's COVID. Yeah. yeah. Now that's interesting. I think I know what that is after watching Antiques Roadshow last night. Oh, look at the 1514 and the D. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, Albrecht Dürer. Yeah. Did they signature. have wigs at that point, Jim? Is that wigs? A wig puffer? Yeah, could be a wig puffer. Well, the, 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 the cherub's <laughs> got pretty curly hair. I reckon that's a wig. 
that could be a weak path, or it could just be a blower for the forge. Yeah, but a bit small yeah. though, isn't it? You're the right. End those, the edge, those, those the end of the edge looks like a cupid bow. Or, so, or it could be the handle or something sticking out of a sheath. It looks, it looks like the tip of a bellows. Mm. Yeah. Like Stephen, 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 you're our resident nail expert. These, these forged nails. Now they're beautifully interesting in them as much as they're, they've got that right. scallop, scallop top to them. Are you familiar with that type of top? Um, it would. Well, first off, um, those nails have been pulled. Because Ooh. of you can see the bends and the twists in the nails, mm -hmm. and that's why I thought the um, the yeah on the other well side right. where the the nail puller because that is tradition yeah. in the eighteen hundreds in my time period they're not using the claw the hammer um, unless it's it's you know you're up on a ladder or something like that that's when you would use the claw the hammer. But if you're in a shop, you use nail pullers because a cut nail could be extracted almost intact and reused somewhere else. But even these nails could be straightened out on an anvil or a flat iron with a nail and just reuse them. But the, the nail heads, um, the, first off, that would be designed as, you know, like oh, a clinch nail or any, you want the head of the nail is, is acting as part of the fastening process. A clinch nail, if you got, let's say, for doors, typically they were used uh, uh, for, you would drill hole through the entire um, number of pieces, and then you drive the nail, and you needed to have a large head on the top because then you'd flip it over and you'd bend the edge of the nail around on itself, like making a J and then driving it perpendicular to the grain. And that would act as a staple to hold the, 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 um, the nail in place. And that would be, if this were a finished nail, there would be no head. So this, the, the head, a headed nail had a purpose. And, um, you know, I, there are so many different nail types that I've seen. Um, when, Those look when like flat cut made. nails. These are blacksmith made. Um, now, it's just occurred to me, is there not some symbolic thing about this? Are they not the nails from the crucifix? Ooh, well, ooh. that could very well mm -hmm. be. Possible? Well, Let's that see. could be the perfect lead-in to another Dura picture showing a crucifixion with... Um, an auger being used to make sure the nails don't split the wood. Just thinking of the keys she's got as well, there's quite a bit of religious context to those. Oh, yeah. Too, too, too many nails for the crucifixion. Crucifixion only three nails. So, but, uh, but then it wouldn't be called melancholy because they'd have to look on the brighter side of life, wouldn't they? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was also thinking about that thing down in the right hand corner. Uh, because, because the, the connection between the, the four humors and the various, the, the four types of bodily fluids and black gall in the case of melancholia, if it might be something to do with a treatment against melancholia. So readjusting the balances of the four humors. I think that's wrong, sorry. I, 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 there's two things there for me. I think yeah. that's a bag. I think that's a bagpipe underneath there. <laughs> <laughs> it's really oh, Scottish. Cool. It's Scottish. Yes. Yeah. Number one is a bag. Bag. That could be a cause of melancholy. Right. So I'll bet I'll break here's, here's something I don't know if you mentioned. My internet was a wee bit funny earlier, but see on the end of the stick, the straight edge, it looks like a cupid's yeah. bow to me. Yes, it does. You're well, right. It does. And I'll yeah. really it's zoom well, into well that. spotted. Well spotted. And that is a cupid's bow. Yeah, I think Chris Swartz has examined this in some of his uh, talks, and I think we've, the, he's, he's shown other uh, drawings and stuff of uh, early tools, and this is a straight edge, and they're often decorated with this cube yeah. at the ends. So Yes, I, yeah, I agree. Definitely a backpipe. I can tell that's a backpipe. Yeah, I a thought backpipe. it was a bull inseminator. Yeah. yeah, it does. I was going to say it was an inseminator, but I'm not sure about that. I think he's just blowing air up his skirt. I think I prefer bagpipe. <laughs> it could be one of an enema tube. 
Oh. No, let's not go there. Okay. Uh, let's let's do that. Do that. Do that. It's let's not even half past nine. Yet. Yet. <laughs> <laughs> let's let's well, move on to the serious guys. Um, I, I do think that was. That, I mean, that's that's fascinating and, and uh, brilliant, brilliant. Did um, I mean the next one up? If we, if we want to move on to the next picture, I think sure. it's uh, Daryl. Daryl was up uh, next on the chat. So Daryl, um, it's free for all for sharing. So you can put your picture up on there. Hey, okay. here. Uh, where do you go? Where do you go? Can I can I ask Daryl though, maybe a bit of history around the artist as well? You know, if you if you you know their name and yeah. the, maybe the the period and you know if you if you know anything more about them would be yeah. This as well. this this is an image from uh, from a book of ours that's at the Morgan Library, and they've digitized some of it, but unfortunately, it's not terribly um, high resolution. And you can see the thumbnail here of the guy at the bottom. Oh, yeah. And there's some people working on some timber framing. He's got, this guy has an ax and this apparent lady has a chisel and a mallet. And there's yet again, the same saw mm. that Drewer, Drewer, ah, uh, had sure. in the, Drewer, yeah, had, had in the, uh, the other picture. There's also a brace and bit and the typical basket of tools. Um, I've seen an awful lot of uh, depictions from the medieval period where tools were carried in a basket. And this one evidently has a basket. He's got what appears to be a plane and a square and dividers in there. And if busy, you look in the back, yeah, building. the split saw. Yeah, they've, they've got um, a, uh, they re some timbers in the back on a trestles. Frame. Yeah, And that's a, saw, that's a saw table. They're, yeah. they're actually, there's a saw pit above ground. Yeah. Yeah. And you can see the, the building being constructed off in the background and they're doing some joinery on whatever this is here. Is this, is from, this is from, hang on a sec, where did it go? I had the information at hand only moments ago. Is there a translation of the, uh, of the book part? Um, each of the pages, yeah, each of the pages generally has, uh, I've lost it now. <laughs> it's 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 an illuminated book. Um, yes, I'll it's a it's forget, a book of forget. hours. Yeah. Um, it's a uh, MS um, nine one MS M dot nine one seven slash nine four five. This is the hours of Catherine of Cleves, apparently, at the Morgan Library. And I just thought this one was neat because it not only had the people working and the same tools that we typically see in, in most of the pictures, but it has the basket that I've seen so yeah. often where they carry their, uh, their gear. And it, also, and it also proves that Levi Strauss actually stole that idea. Yes. <laughs> Blue jeans. Apparently so. Okay, so... Wow. Well, the fact that he's wearing blue pants, that... That's significant because blue is not an easy color to come by because back in those days, it's, it's coming from the mollusks of, um, off the coast of Lebanon. The Solix. Possibly. Yeah. Solix, Solix uh, from Crete. Solix. Um, I, I think uh, uh, matter also would produce a blue dye. And and lapis lazuli, but that's much much more expensive. Yeah. But that's a, that's definitely a cerulean blue from the Solix. Mm. Well, well the, in any case, this one's blue. this one's actually paint. So, grain of salt with that one. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Is uh, anyone else have any more comments? We can go to someone else's picture. If... It's good. It's interesting. I think it's yet another picture, and there are many more pictures of a saw with what. To me, looks like impossibly rough looking teeth. That you can't, <laughs> yes. can't imagine. Well, and that one up. there, that one there reminds me of a hay saw. There's a lot and they're of all, they're all like sad. That. That's a sword, the original swords. Uh, I was talking to David really? Lundqvist about this, and the swords that the sword maker would make a serrated edge one as a saw. Uh, so they did have that um, that typical sword handle and and uh, uh, what do they call the um, thing that, that stops the guard. you guard oh. yeah uh, uh, yeah so uh, I and and then it moved on to the pistol grip when pistols became from 
familiar because gunsmiths were also making those type of handles. But a saw wondering. with such uneven teeth. Oh yeah, I think that's just wouldn't... an artistic representation. Yeah. Now. But it's repeated. I mean, Dura was drawing apparently very accurately from things like the plane and the nails and the hammer. And the saw in that picture has really irregular sized teeth. Yes. Could nobody sharpen a saw properly? Was it all cows and calves from way back? Maybe nobody right. can draw a saw properly. Well, keep in mind, he could to have draw the teeth at scale, you wouldn't see them. Also, he didn't actually draw. Look at how thought. small this this painting is. You see the guy's yeah. thumbnail yeah. here, and someone painted something which is smaller than your thumbnail with this much detail. And I'm 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 impressed by that. That that brace is is that small in the uh, in the picture, and yet it's that detailed when you but, when you look. But at what it. Andy yeah. said, what Andy says is correct because Dura Dura is the is the barometer really here, isn't it? It's the accuracy yeah. of Dura. Yeah, yeah. Be because as an engraver, he's working to very much finer tolerances than somebody who's using paint on parchment. But if he could show us the detail of the joint on the dividers, he could show us even teeth if he wanted to. Yeah, I think, I suspect sure. that he's doing that accurately and the, yeah. the saws of that day were not well, uh, were not well sharpened. They were just sharpened. I think, I think this could be a Sherlock Holmes thing for looking for saws in other paintings as we go forward during the weeks to, to do a comparison to whether well, or not we're talking about actual physical accuracy or, or just uh, artistic representation. Then we can all talk about what we saw. Yeah, well, even nibs. Well, there's no nib. There's no nibs on this one. There's no nib on it. So no um, nibs about saws. Saw, saw, saw. Actually, 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 I think they have tell. twenty nibs. You can't tell if it has twenty nibs. Nib. Um, saw, <laughs> the, saw, the nib saw. is off site. I mean, oh, there it is. Um, it's saw, so saw, also rather complicated um, tool to make, actually compared yeah. to a chisel or some hammer or something. So mm -hmm. um, when, you, when you think of the people back then not having proper files and things, yeah, um, it would probably be a, a rather hard tool to make, actually. Well, when, when, I, when I thought that, I thought that about files, uh, and I really did, until I saw Chris Ramsey on ClickSpring make a set of single cut files for doing the anti Katira mechanism. Mm -hmm. and they are beautiful and they are a direct representation of what must have been used to make the Antikythera mechanism, which is thousands of years before this picture. Yeah. Well, but I think that again, you have skilled craftsmen doing that and the people that are doing this carpentry work, they didn't have a hardware store to go. They were going to a blacksmith and saying, make me this. And, and they were doing it as roughly as, as best they could for the, the situation well, you, say that. They were in. You, you say that, but the Masons built Salis Salisbury Cathedral, you know. Yeah, yeah, idea. but they were very specific. They, the, that's not what they're building in this picture. No, no, I know that. I understand that. But my, yeah, my, so, my reference so, is so the, the accuracy. Level of tool work, the level of tool work also would be on a scale. And, I'm, and I'm, this... just, I'm just starting to wonder whether the early saws were actually made from swords. I, th I they think were, they were. And they but, would well, be cut into a sword. And that's no, think, why the teeth are think, so coarse, because the saw would have been quite thick. I, I'm wondering if they are very Japanese type thickness of a sword blade. So a sword blade or a knife blade, but cut with very aggressive teeth in a very, very acute angle, very similar to a Ryoba or a Japanese saw, uh, but, but used on softwoods. And, you know, you, you can get quite aggressive, but very thin teeth. Uh, in that circumstance, I've got one. I've got I've got a, a 300 millimeter uh, rip saw from <clears> Japan that's got that, teeth that would you know would put jaws to shame. That's not a, a, a pull cut though, Jim. That's a push cut. Yeah, but I mean, yeah, push pull, whatever. Let's <laughs> <laughs> so, right, move on to the next picture. Look, yes. Before we, before we do, oh, <laughs> there was right. a frame saw in the background. I don't know if anyone noticed it. Yeah, yes, that's yeah. you were mentioning the frame yeah. saw. Sorry, I, I wasn't paying attention on that. Come on, Trinic, get Come with on. it. Come on. Try right to bring up things that I'm we not... already discussed as often as possible. I like it. You're supposed to be the bibliographer <laughs> here. I'm gonna yeah, stick my on. I'm gonna stick my gold ratios up at you. Jim, I have a question about those what? there for you. What? 
Well, when you were showing those, um, it looked like the, uh, the same ratio went from the top pivot point to where you have the mechanism in the middle and then to the point that it's the same ratio as the outside. So if you go, if you drew a straight line from your bottom pivot point in front of you where your fingers are, are, are covering, that, that, and you draw oh, a that. straight line, no, there, exactly. From that, that center and then up a straight line to the middle pivot. No, yeah. not that one. This is the one now that you're touching. And out yeah. to the point of the leg, just doing one leg. Is that the same ratio from the, from the bottom pivot to the middle pivot and to the point of the leg, following up the leg in a straight line? You mean, is that to there the same as that? No, no, there? your outside leg. Only use an outside leg. This from one? there to that, yeah, from that point, outside leg, outside, yeah. outside <laughs> leg. Stay there. Now, there. stay where you, yeah, now draw down Leave towards your bottom here. pivot, and you'll go through another pivot, right there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then yeah. to your bottom. <laughs> so, so that one, is, yeah, they're the same. Th th this one, from there to there, to there to there is the same. Right. No, no, that's not my question. Is okay. that bottom pivot to the middle pivot and then to the point of the leg the same ratio as you're creating with your golden ratio? Oh, I don't bloody well know. I mean, all I know is the ends are. But that's I've, I've but it looks it. like it is. It looks oh, like it is. Yeah. Well, you see, see this point here, right? Is too long. Yeah. Okay. Now, if I adjust that, which I will do when I've finished, it, it accurately makes it exactly the right ratio. Because right. that's your that's your adjustment point to the point. It's quite a phenomenal difference from 0.162 to 1.64 or five or whatever, and it makes a lot of difference. So right. that's, the tuning of it is done that way. So I've left these exactly equal, and yeah. that one will be that one will be changed. Is that okay? It just looks like in that picture that Shrenik is showing that straight line now down to the down to the other way exactly, Shrenik. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. It looks like that equals the same ratio that you're creating at the bottom. Probably. Yeah, probably. Almost ma mathematically, probably. I'm not sure. Yeah. <laughs> I, ju I, just w I just went by the uh, ratio. Oh, do you want me to measure it? Okay, well, Matthias, why are you, are you ready? The... Yeah, I'm ready. Okay, okay. let's go. Right. Uh, we are going to go rather more modern here. Let's see and share. So this is here's one I painted earlier. Oh, I yeah, exactly. Here's one I painted earlier. No. Oh, I love this, this one. This is uh, a watercolor painted around 1905 by Carl Larsson, <laughs> uh, who was one of the most prolific and well-known Swedish artists of that time and basically ever since. He's still immensely popular. He's still on on. Uh, cookie tins and calendars and all sorts of stuff. Uh, he was very much in, influenced by and interested in the arts and crafts movement. So uh, this painting shows the carpenter's shop at his farmstead in the Dalarna region in sort of uh, northwestern mid-Sweden, where he and his wife bought a place sometime in the late 1800s uh, and went to live there. I didn't think they farmed it themselves actively. I believe the man doing the planing in the picture is either one of his hired hands or a tenant farmer or something along those lines, but what, one of the, the people who worked the farm for him. Uh, he was, uh, they were very influential in the sense that they didn't, they designed most of their own furniture, they didn't make it, they had it made, but they designed most of their own furniture, and it was also in a fairly arts and crafts inspired style, slightly lighter perhaps than the classic uh, William Morris stuff from from the uh, from, from a bit earlier in the 1800s. Uh, the place is still standing and it still looks pretty much as it did a uh, hundred years ago. 
still belongs to the family. Uh, I believe they don't live there any longer. They, they come and stay for midsummer and other important occasions. And for the rest of the year, it's, uh, it's a museum that you can visit called Sundborn. Anyway, so, so uh, and finally, the child is likely to be one of Carl uh, own children. He painted a lot, a lot of the, the stuff he did in this period was centered around his family life and life on, 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 on and around the farmstead. And this one is simply called In the Carpenter's Shop. So uh, as you can, well, I mean, as we can see, uh, the chap is uh, planing a fairly long uh, timber. Uh, he's working on what looks like a classic European style bench. You can see it's been, uh, the long stretches are fastened with tusk tenons. Yep. There's a tail vise here. Uh, there are square bench dogs. There's a line missing there where you just put your marker. Yeah. The, the, the line doesn't carry through. It should do. Yes, it should. I think that's the young apprentice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you've got a couple of frame saws hanging up here on the wall. Chisels. Four. Yeah. What looks like... It's like a birch log leaning against the other planks. Yep. And over here uh, is, uh, I forget the word in English, the... Uh, of a horse. Yeah, for exactly, for, 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 uh, for a cart or a carriage, yeah. horse drawn. Yeah. It's interesting that uh, there's a saw stool, which Chris Swartz has been going on about. Yes. Uh, one mm -hmm. end, and in the background there's a saw stool, what it looks like, but the top's the other way up, so it's rounded on top there. Yeah. But, well, this has got a flat top. I wonder why you would have a, a rounded top. Yeah, I mean, you, you, you could imagine if you were using it to feed stuff across, but he's doing that here, and, and I mean, it, there, is no, there are no power tools, so you don't need an, an outfeed or infeed uh, roller. Right. What, what about what about rot what about rotating a wheel? Ba based on the fact that that's a carriage uh, uh, hasp thing. Yeah. Uh, uh, what about uh, small wheels or wheels uh, rested on on that to to work on the rim and turn it round yeah. on the ra on the round so that it, it doesn't, <laughs> you know, he's sitting on a round basically. It's possible, and I mean I think the fact that he has drawn it with this shape means that it was that shape. It, he's famous for being quite accurate and, and almost photographic. I mean, there is a simplification in, in, in the set of lines, but it's still uh, usually when he draws stuff uh, uh, from his home and, and you can go and see them in the museum today, they look exactly the same. They, they are true representations. It might, might just have been something that was used for, for uh, putting up a couple of logs to sort, uh, a log across to saw through yeah. on a couple of those. So, uh, so uh, some sort of uh, a horse for rough work. Yeah. What is the child holding? Uh, that is a very interesting question. I don't know if I'm able to zoom in here. Uh, no, I don't I, think I am. We can, do it, we can do it on our own screens. Isn't it a I broken it toy a shovel? I, I don't. She wants the carpenter to stop doing what he's doing and mend her toy spade. Could uh, be. Uh, you could handle, be. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, she's broken. She's yeah, broken. Just, it's broken handle on a spade. Yeah. It's a spade. Yes. She's yeah. holding up the other piece. Are you sure she's not holding up a gun? No, <laughs> it's the piece that's broken off the <laughs> handle yeah. to say, please stop and mend this for me. Yeah. yeah, it's a spade. It's a spade, and that's the other half yeah. of the handle. Yeah. yeah, it's a spade for working like on a sand pit or whatever. And yeah. the, yeah. the end of it, the end of it is angled at, to give it, you know, artistic uh, perspective. And yeah. she's got a giant wind-up vice coming out of her back. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's, that's the that's, that's going to be an issue on, later on on the yeah. workbench. No, I know. Yeah. But I think it might. Be. Oh, it could. It... Did we oh, zoom in sure. on the bench? She she's uh she's got a leather apron on, if you know. Yes. 
Yes. As he as has he. His grip on the plane is kind of cool. I'd never seen that grip until um, Rex Kruger brought it up about a week ago, and he said he saw it on old paintings. He's reaching across. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, you're right. He's right. reaching across. It's the correct Richard, grip. Richard, wasn't yeah. wasn't you weren't you saying Richard that that's what you when you make your uh, 18th century planes that that that's the grip you're anticipating? Um, no, it's more the the grip on the toe. Uh, I don't like to call it a grip. On the toe. Grip is not what it is. Uh, the the, the fingers lay down the side of the plane. That's more on the on the toe. I'm trying to think how I hold the front of the. Wait a minute. I've got to grab a plane and think. About I've it. seen that grasp in other pictures of people yeah. planing. I've got <laughs> planes with that with that grasp. Oh yeah. Yeah, I, I usually <laughs> hold a, a joint to a plane like that. I, I, well, I think he's got his thumb in the mouth, hasn't he? That is how you hold a hey. Sorry, I'm holding yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Think, yeah. think the thumb is across. Around. Sorry, I'm. Yeah, that, that's that's correct. Yeah. 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 And he's pointing well, his index finger as he ought to. Sorry. Yeah, he's pointing yeah. his index. Yeah, possibly. Yeah. But Jim will talk, point out that there's something wrong with the shaving because it's coming down, and Jim's shavings yeah. go straight up. <laughs> my mine goes straight up, yeah, and out the front. Right. I mean, I'm sorry, but there's something wrong with the tuning on that plane. Yeah, oh, he's taking we, a deep cut. I think what we all tend to forget, right. as well, which is clearly shown in this picture, is you spend about an hour working mm. plane in by hand. It also yeah. me the workshops must have just been piled high with shavings by the end of the day. As you can see. That's why the little kid needs a shovel fix yeah. because she's going <laughs> to shovel it all up for him. <laughs> it's not like the just... workshop where the shavings are all tiny and yeah. off the planer and they're all just in a nice little leap pile. I, I, I was making some skirting yesterday, um, running an OG on a by hand with a molding plane, and the shavings coming off, they were like six foot long, mm. just. Oh, it's just made such a mess. I was having a job walking around. I was sort of like actually almost being tripped over by long shavings. But doesn't it draw in the moisture nicely and everything? Yeah. Soaks yeah. up the moisture in the air. Yeah. There are huge wedges on the uh, on the bottom of the bench. Look at the size yeah. of the wedges. They're almost yeah. as long as the thickness of the uh, stretchers. Yes. Yeah. And then so there's the a dog directly above like them. Looks like it's stopping yeah. the board from actually going sideways. It's amazing how, how thick the stretches are, isn't it? The, how high they are. Yes. Yeah. Deep. Yeah. He's obviously got a little bandsaw somewhere because there's a bandsaw blade rolled up on the window. Yeah, there is. And there's, I think the bandsaw's over the back of there where that short saw horse is. I think that's a, that's a mortiser, isn't it? Thickness plane yeah. there in the corner. <laughs> So it's all just posed for his Instagram feed. Yeah. It's yeah. interesting though, when, when, when you look, uh, it, does, it, it looks as though the leg is just one solid piece. Yes. But is that, is that, is oh, that, yeah. a, is that yeah. a straight, is that a straight edge up on the rafters there? Yeah, I wondered about that, hanging that's, off there. No, I don't think, I, th I, th I think that's just something to hang stuff from. The straight yeah. edge is up on the um, cupboard. Yeah. Oh yeah. What's the black oh, yeah. needle-like thing oh, yeah. above the boy's hand? What is that black needle-like thing? Good question. It looks like it has an eye. It looks like it has That's... a piece of thread going through it. Yeah, it could be a drawball pin. But is there is is there a I way? I think to that's zoom another in? nail from the crucifixion. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> is it time to zoom in? It looks like he's using the yeah. You can zoom in the with window your... frame. As the stop for that board, yeah. So yeah, if, he is, if he's he? going to finish the stroke, he's going to go right through the window. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's why he's got the window cracked. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's, uh, it's long, I, I, it's I think it's crazy. quite crazy how the um, the chisels are so far away from the bench. Yeah. You know, if, you, if you're going to put a rack of chisels up, you know, why, why don't you have them, you know, closer to you? But why do you need four frame saws? Good different, different two. I, well, I do wonder if um, if those frame saws are the same that would have been used. So you would have had a rip cut and a cross cut. Well, yeah, but I mean, even so, I think he's just a collector. I think he's just a collector. The whole it's Chester's granddad. Yeah, Chester's <laughs> granddad. 
We and, I, and I sympathize with his children as far as the shavings, because that's exactly what my father's shop looked like, except higher. Hmm. There were yeah. no corners to the room because they were full of sawdust yeah. and shavings. And, it's nice and he drank. He's a drinker. Yeah, there's bottles on that shelf. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah. I'm not yeah. sure about that. That's his shellac. No, not in that. Not in that big bottle. That bottle is. Uh, that's a decanter. Yeah, it's alcohol. Or, or, it's alcohol. No, no it's I, alcohol. I think that's where the Amphiex is stored. What do you call it? No, it's alcohol, and he's mixing it with shellac. That's an alcohol bottle. That's yeah, a gin it's an bottle, isn't it? Alcohol bottle, but it usually was wine or rum. Yeah, Polish vodka. These whiskeys up Swedish on the top vodka. shelf. Don't blame him. Yeah, the top he's shelf. had a hard life. It's it's interesting that. Um, the source stall or whatever we want to call it, this end that's holding the other end yep. of the wood up, that must be about the same height as the bench. Yes. Which yes. In the normal circumstances would be much too high for sawing wood on. So it must have been purpose made for Probably, that. But, but, but if, if, if you want to be able to work long uh, timbers that are that, that long, you need to and um, you need to put them up on mm. two things. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Because it, it's often puzzled me as to what joiners did when they wanted to plane up sort yeah. of really long bits of timber. Because, uh, I mean, a typical English joiner's bench is still only about 10 foot long. Mm. If you've got a 15 foot length of skirting, I've often wondered what we do, whether they push two benches together, but maybe they did something like this. It's, yeah. mm. you know, well, the, the I, I, he's got the end, the end of, of the, the stuff uh, braced against the windowsill. Yeah, yeah. And the other end is sitting on his radial arm saw at the same height. So he's, yes. you know, oh, but it, the end. doesn't it doesn't it doesn't it matter? Uh, and perhaps you 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 could uh, fill us in on, on this. Is it doesn't it not matter uh, what he is? If he was a, a wagon wright or a coach builder, and let's say he's now shaping the one of the main frame units everything in that workshop would be geared to coach building wouldn't it for instance yeah. so yeah, the, it, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm quite sure. i don't know exactly. I, I i when i was looking for for images for tonight i found this when i thought that it would make a nice one and uh i did find some stuff he he comes back in a number of of the other uh, pictures these were published in a book in 1906 which in the english translation was called my farm and it's quite clear that he is one of the the he's part of the workforce on the farm. I didn't I didn't manage to find out whether he was a hired hand or a tenant, but but he he's he's a a, a, a general type of farm worker, and this is typical typical for the kind of carpenter shop you would have at any farm. Uh, my grandfather. Uh, started farming when he retired and he had a workshop still in the 1970s and 80s looking very much like this. Yeah. Uh, so it's, you don't know. You it's, get it's, to do it's, everything. It's, for doing general woodwork for use everything. on and around the farm. Sure. So, yeah, you know, so but his wagon, of that. The, hay, the hay wagon and yeah. anything else that's pulled by shy horses or oxen yeah. would be, you know, we're, we're, going, we're going for the only clue in there that lends me to that theory but yes, any please. farmer would have to make that himself for for his yes. own farm for his own yes. plowing and stuff so exactly it's not necessarily specialized no no, no. Um, Point taken. otherwise i think those chisels and things probably would be closer to the bench and uh and probably more in order or something or specialized it, going back to that rounded top sawhorse mm -hmm. is it a sawhorse because uh, you know, is is that deceiving us? Because there, is there more wood just laying up against the side next to the two that are there already, and then that's just a log that's laying on top? Or is it is it actually a sawhorse? Because we can't see the other end, and that that no, leg that goes down does not make sense because it doesn't look at the right angle for a sawhorse at all. No, I, so think, I think it it's but, holding the board. It's designed to hold the board. We do that all the time at the fort. Um, well, with a rounded top size and shape, and and you just you just build a horse 
that is the same height, the surface of the horse is the same height as the bench. Yeah, but we're not talking about that. We're talking about the rounding of the top being com convex in on the, the top, bed, right? In the back. This one here in the background. Oh. What's the number 10 for above it? There's a floating number 10 directly is it, above is it. it. And what's the thing to the right of that? That looks like right. a mushroom. Is yeah. that a floating number 10 or is that an attempt to draw a knot? Or a door knob. Is it, is it, or a draw knob? Oh, yes. Yes, exactly. Something like yeah. that. Mm. It, yeah. It could a, that could all knob. just be parts of this other jobs. Like a made stuff. implement of some kind. So that could be a knob. I mean, it, I think it's just meant to, to, to represent the stuff that's stored against the wall for, for whenever you're going to need it. Right. Yeah. Back, background stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Background stuff. So is this workshop downstairs then? Because that's no, it looks like it's snowing outside. It's got a, all white outside the window. It's it's probably uh, winter because when you look at what he's wearing, he's wearing a, a fairly thick sweater. Yeah. Uh, and he's wearing uh, heavy shoes with gaiters. Oh. So and and also the child is wearing a fairly uh, thick sweater and. Uh, it has a shovel, a beanie, but, 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 but a hat. Yeah, so, the kid probably so just came it, in from it, shoveling it's, in, it's, uh, in during the colder part of the year. Yes, mm. he's one of the elves by the looks of it. Yeah, either that or back in those days, they still had the same problem we do. If you shoot the interior of a room, your window shows white out. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's beautiful. <laughs> it's just a beautiful water. It's a, a beautiful watercolor representation of light, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. You picked up on the vice at the right hand end of the bench, mm -hmm. just behind the child's left yep. shoulder. Yeah. 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 The shoulder there's, a, there's actually a dog there holding the length of timber. If you follow yeah. that down, oh, there's yes. a dog there. Yeah. There's a dog there. You can see another dog inserted in the bench to the right of it as well, just on the, the child's arm, which is pointing up. Yeah. You can see it sticking down. And do we think that underneath the bench, that's a drawer? For other, even more I tools. Think that, that looks like a drawer, yes. Yeah. It is one of Chester's family. But it's a fascinating <laughs> aspect. It's a fascinating aspect of the if you go to the under his arm mm -hmm. bit downwards, yeah. you see the light area, you yeah. see the very, very faint line of the bench. Now, if you follow that along, mm -hmm. does it meet up with the with the the height of the vice itself? Because underneath the wood itself, there's, like you said, there's a missing line, isn't there? There's a missing... Yes. I think because I think what you're seeing there is the same as what you're seeing here, namely a solid leg, a solid mm -hmm. wide leg. That yes. The, the, the two uh, stretches are going into. So, so that's the line of, of the drawer. That's the outline of the drawer here. Yeah. And but but I'm talking, about, I'm talking about the horizontal, the horizontal line with the light. Yeah. yeah. Right. If you follow that in a line across mm -hmm. the painting, it it goes in line with the uh, the bit underneath her broken handle. It goes in line with that, which is extension extension of the vice. Oh, yeah. um, but where he's got the wood resting is is that much higher. Oh, I I see I see where uh, you looks like bit. stepped up. Yes. Yeah. Well, to block in there to hold it up higher, better for planing on. Yeah. Yeah, it looks like it. Yeah, because there's something clamped in here, I think. Yeah. That's, it's too bad we can't zoom in. Yes. Well, you can with, you can with your own screen or you can on Android anyway, but it doesn't give you much help really. No. Um, it's a lovely painting. The, the, um, the long length of timber on the left-hand side, the sole long length of timber, can anyone see that it's curved towards the top? Yeah, we've talked yeah, that's, about that's part that. Of the 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 cot cot pool. Cot. It's, it's a cart cart. Yeah. Yeah. Shrinik, <laughs> are you asleep through half of this? That was the first. <laughs> que that was the first question. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, He's I'm... asleep. He's asleep. He must be. He's doing his hosting job. Sorry. Sorry. It's it's very hard. Very hard. And then and I... then we said. It, assuming it's a coach builder because of the only clue that we have, which is the heart for the, I, of the car. And, and there, so that's two options you had. <laughs> I've been on Zoom all day. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, I'm, yeah. No, it's, it's, I'm it's over Zoom. A, a pair of traces for, for, for a carriage. 
I love I love the uh, I love the verdant green up in the top uh, right hand corner of the uh, the moss. It's yeah, abs- uh, from an artistic point of view, and the, mm. and the and the and that's Van Dyke brown above mm. the window. It's yeah. just a very oh, typical. To that happy guy. No, it, it really is a, be- a beautiful brown. <laughs> uh, it's a, a stunning brown. Yeah. Jim, would you agree with me that as a watercolorist, that is uh, a very good picture he's made. Oh, absolutely. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. the light is just, uh, to get light like that in a watercolour is... Uh, Very difficult to get it is, like that. It's magical. And, and it's not just that. It's the, it's the curvature of the shadow on mm. the wall that is formed by the boards standing upright. Yeah. Uh, mm. You know, showing the different distance from the boards to that flat wall. Yeah. To j- just get that, it's just, you know, it's tiny little details like that that make it so realistic. Is this not a pen and ink um, that's been, it that's is been pen, coloured, it is, you know, watercoloured yeah, in? Watercoloured in, yeah. But, I mean, you can use pen or you can use pencil or, or whatever, but it's beautifully rendered. Is, is this axe head uh, where there's a sleeve for the uh, axe handle to fit into, is that is that a common... Not very, but well, yes and no. I mean, I have I have a couple of of uh, Swedish made splitting axes for splitting firewood, and they have a similar arrangement. That but that is just a a, a, a steel sleeve that's been fitted around uh, the handle, so that if when you miss, yeah, uh, yeah. with a cut <laughs> and you hit the handle, uh, you don't break it as easily. You don't think it's that's... built into the axe head then? Uh, the, I think, here, I think, he, he, here I think it's it's part of the axe head, yes. Here it is yeah. part of the axe head. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's an extended eye. Yeah, yeah it's a four forged. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And Ooh. and the idea is to protect the handle uh when you when you make a bad blow and yeah. and hit the handle instead of, of having the, the blade hitting yeah. whatever you're aiming for. I didn't think the Swede did that. Missed. Uh, mm, it happens. It happens. Oh, I well, Grand Fours Brooks. Uh, uh, Gra- Grand Fours, yes. Grand, Grand Fours axes. I, oh, I, 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 like I actually had to send send off for a new. Uh, I did that once with one of my splitting axes, and uh, there was a fault in the hickory handle, mm-hmm. and it, it it split very neatly in two. It sent a bloody bloody big shock up my arm. <laughs> <laughs> I mean. As for, uh, as, uh, if, if nothing worse happens when you have an accident uh, with an axe, I'm, I'm fine with that, but uh, it quite took me by surprise too. Okay, yeah, you're lucky the head didn't come off and bop you one. Yeah. My my oh yeah, yeah, no, it, it's, uh, axes are no, no joking matters. You can have very nasty accidents with them. My great granddad missed and went straight into his shin. Ooh. Ooh. Even, even, even leather. Even leathers won't stop that from, it'll no. just reduce how deep it goes. Yeah. Chainmail will be good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely blunt enough. And, so. and, and some of the new leggings they've yeah. got, they're using uh, Kevlar. Kev, Kev, Kevlar, yeah. Yeah. 